Usually when you think about particle emitters, you think about things like explosion, smoke, uh, you know, dust, uh, sparks, things like that. But you can also use particle, a particle emitter for animation. So what I'd like to show you now is using a particle emitter to produce a, a simple little animation of a bouncing ball. Uh, for starters, let's go ahead and build a ground. We're going to build something for the particle to bounce on that will be later used for the ball. So I'm going to go over to make sure I'm in the Items tab under Add Dynamic Object and I'm going to choose Collision and we're going to call this Ground. I'll hit OK. And I'm going to change the type from Sphere. I'm going to change that to Plane. And then I'm going to change the radius from 1 to 0, just to drop it down to the origin. And for the bounce, I'm going to go ahead and, for right now, we might go back and change it, but for right now I'm going to do something a little higher than 100. Let's do, um, let's do 200. And we might come back and change that. And so that should cover us for the collision object. This, again, is our ground. Go ahead and close that. And now we just need to create uh, the particle emitter that we're going to use to, to capture our animation. So I'm going to go back to add dynamic object and choose particle. And we need to give it a name, so I'll give it shoot. We're going to shoot a particle out of there. Hit OK. And I'm going to position this so that we can see what's going on. So there's our particle emitter. And I'm just going to shoot off one particle. So the birth rate, I'm going to change to 1. For um, generate by, I'm going to say frame. So then on the first frame, it just fires out, out a particle. Um, sphere for nozzle is fine. Size effect, I'm going to set that to no change. And then for particle limit, 1. We'll move over to the particle tab. And for the lifetime, let's go ahead and just change this to 200 so that the particle stays alive for 200 frames. And then I'm going to come down here and change my timeline. Instead of 0 to 60, I'm going to change it to 150. We, we'll do a 150 frame animation. I'm going to move over to motion and I want the particle emitter to shoot out that particle down the positive x. So let's just do um, let's say 4 meters and then I want it to shoot up as well. So you can actually see before I even push play the angle that it's going to be shooting it out at. Go ahead and push play and it shoots pretty high. I'm going to keep it playing and I'm going to come over to the etc tab and type in negative 9 meters. Now we can see that it's shooting out and then bouncing. I'm going to change the angle a little bit just to just kind of dress it up. So I'm going to have it shoot up a little bit more and then I'll zoom out so we can see the result. I think that looks cooler. So it's going to shoot out and then it does a couple bounces over 150 frames. Let's say that we like this animation. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Let's say that we like this animation. We can always go back and change the settings and get something different, but we'll use this. Okay, and so now all I have to do is find a way, I want that to be a ball instead of a particle. I could use something like effects linker and link uh, an object to it, but I want to, in the end, I want to just get rid of all the, the particle emitter and collision objects. I just, I'm just trying to get raw keyframes that I can work with. So to do that, I can move over to, in the effects emitter tab, I can move over to edit effects, and I'm going to come over here where it says command, and I'm going to say make path. What it does, we no longer need to worry about the particle emitter. I'm going to close this down. What it does is it, it takes the path of that one particle, creates a null object that has that exact same motion. So if I push play, we can see the null object is bouncing up and down. It's using the exact same motion. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go in and replace that null object with an object. So I'm going to pause it, and we can see here we've got the, the null object under Items, Replace. I'm going to choose Replace with Object, and I'm going to pick this ball, just a simple little ball. Okay, 
let me just reposition my screen so we can see. And I have, now I have the red ball bouncing instead of the null object using that exact same motion path. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it so we can take a look at, at what's going on here. If we look at our motion path here, or if we come down here to the timeline, we'll see that there's a keyframe on every frame. It bakes that motion. Well, what if you want to have this motion, but you want it to be a little cleaner? You don't want as many keyframes. Well, the motion's smooth, so you could go with this, but say you want to edit it later, uh, or you just don't want to lug around as many keyframes. Well, we can go into the graph editor and clean that up if we'd like. So let's take a look at doing that. I'm going to move over to the graph editor and we can see I'm going to start with the Z. Nothing's going on with the Z, so I'm just going to select all those keyframes and hit delete. Okay, we just don't need those. Then I'll move up to the X and we see we've got this nice smooth curve, but in order to get this nice smooth curve we really don't need all these keyframes. So what I'm going to do is get rid of them, but I want to be able to keep that smooth curve. I can go in and optimize, um, uh, reduce the, the keys, but one way that I like doing it is to come over here to the Footprints menu, Leave Footprint, which is going to kind of leave a ghosted version of what we have here. And I'm just deleting these keyframes. I got the first and last keyframe there. But you can see this faint red version of the it's like a ghosted version of what we had. That allows me to move my time slider here, hit control B, and it'll put a keyframe right where it used to be. But I'm just going to drop a couple of them, enough to where I feel like I'll have what I need for my curve. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes instead of 150 keyframes. And I still have the same curve. Let's do the same thing with the Y. So now it's a little more important uh, where the keyframes are for this in order to get the timing of how the arc and the bounce is happening and then when the liftoff is and then when, the, when it lands again. So I'm going to do the same thing with the footprints and let's see what we can do. So leave footprint and I'm going to delete. Okay, and so I've got the first and the, the last and I'm going to just come to this arc, control B, probably wouldn't hurt to have one here. I'm going to come to here and here where it's hanging on for a little bit. Probably wouldn't hurt to have one here. And I can always go back and clean this up. I'll try not to be too picky in this demonstration just so that you don't have to watch me tweaking a bunch of frames in the graph editor. But hopefully you'll get the idea of what I'm doing here. I'm just using as few of frames as I need. And again, I can even drop some of these keyframes, but I don't want to drop so many that I lose that nice animation that I had that was already generated for me from the particle emitter. Okay, so I'll just drop just a few more. I don't want to have too many. I, I don't I actually don't need too many between here because I can fix the the curves, the TCB spline, and uh, get that tweaked out, but just so that we kind of are comparing apples to apples. So let's say that that's going to work for us. We do need to kind of tweak it out a little bit. But as you can see, instead of 150 keyframes, I've got just a few, which will allow me to edit it later much easier. So let me go ahead and close this down. And we can see on our motion path, there's only so many keyframes. And we can come to see down here in our timeline, but I still have the same animation. See, we've got a nice smooth little ball bounce. It's a little light. I think gravity uh, has changed on this planet where this ball is bouncing. But hopefully this gives you uh, an idea of how to go about using a particle emitter to drive the animation. And because this is now keyframes, once we make path, it's keyframes and, and we're set. Which means that I can take this particle emitter and take this collision object. Well, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to take the collision ob sorry, the particle emitter, and I'm going to hit the uh, delete clear from scene. Yes. And I'm going to clear this from scene. Yes. And let's take a look. 
even though the particle emitter isn't there and the the collision object isn't there we still have our animation we never lost it because once we made the path it was no longer relying on the particle emitter or the collision object so there you go here's an example of using a particle emitter to uh, animate and nothing stops you from uh, taking it beyond just a bouncing ball